Family Hola, hola, hola familia Espero, espero que todos, todos estén bien How are you? How are you? ¿Cómo están? Tonight we are going to dig in, dig into our Christian Christian book series Our Christian book series Fervent Fervent A woman's A woman's battle plan for serious with 
enough worries until avoiding them because you're driving bec until avoiding them becomes your driving motivation again it says if i were your enemy i magnify your fears making them appear insurmountable intimidating you with enough worries until avoiding them becomes your driving motivation i would use anxiety to cripple you to paralyze you leaving you indecisive clinging to safety and sameness always on the defensive because of what might happen when you hear the word faith all i want you to hear is unnecessary risk unnecessary risk when you hear the word faith all i want you to hear is unnecessary risk isn't the enemy that sneaky it says a fun road trip to austin texas just me my big sister crystal and one of our closest closest friends shauna says crystal was driving i was in the front passenger seat from passenger seat and shauna was in the back shauna was in the back talking about something she'd been thinking about doing but why she couldn't do it and how she felt bad about not doing it but why it didn't matter because she could never do it anymore like that crystal and i looked ahead out the windshield out the windshield sipping our lattes sipping our lattes and listening nodding and sympathy nodding in sympathy and genuine concern when we tried to press her on what were her real hesitations were she kept talking and rationalizing and deflecting and defending until she finally nearly snapped our heads back with a really unexpected highly exasperated because i'm not ready she snapped back with an unexpected highly exasperated because I'm not ready. Road noise, the low hum of the air coming from the AC vents. Because I'm scared. Allow me to step back for a second and do a better job of introducing Shauna to you. Because if you knew about her was what I just described, I'd be giving you the completely wrong impression. My friend is a devoted wife of nearly 20 years and a highly accomplished, highly intelligent mother of three. Tremendously adept at managing a full household, dynamic, outspoken believer, trains hardcore for marathons. I don't even know how many of those things she's run. She's full of energy but with tenderness too as well as a knack for giving forgiving people spot on insight about their deepest needs and toughest questions as a licensed counselor who runs her own business she's the kind who gets sent referrals when people hit a dent at that end though, though through all the routes of care and treatment and simply aren't going to make it unless they see someone of Shauna's caliber. She's the best in her field. She's the best in her field and in every other way too. In the months leading up to our outing, however, the Lord had been fairly obvious and direct in leading her to start cutting back on her caseload and start focusing on doing some writing, catacalling, and stellar wisdom she's been dishing out for all three years and collecting it into resources that can multiply her ministry of counsel and encouragement to those who how to those who knows how many others it 
says her husband had told her, honey, just do it. We'll be all right financially. I believe in you and what you can do. And I truly want you following the Lord on this. We'll do what we need to do to make it happen. I'm totally behind you. So everything was lining up. Every indication on her spiritual radar was tracking with this new direction with this new direction only one problem she was scared <laughs> master's degree business owner college teacher even a woman like her can get scared side note I'd be scared all the time <laughs> all the time and you would not even believe it but we'll go into that later and it says, and now in the car on the way back from a weekend with friends, tears rolled down her cheeks as she as she chronicled her internal struggle. What if I can't do it? What if I make all these arrangements, release my client list, sit down in front of the computer and nothing comes out? Nothing makes sense. Worse yet, what if I do get some stuff written? What if I do get some stuff written? Start to feel pretty good about it. But nobody likes it. Lord Jesus. Is the Lord ministering to anybody right now or speaking to anybody right now? It says, or what if they're too nice to say they don't like it. But I can tell from what they do say and don't say that I failed miserably. What if no one avenues crop up where I can get my work published or distributed. Even if I can, what if people don't find it helpful? What if people don't find it helpful or useful or any different from anything else they've read? What if the financial adjustment will need to make in order for me to do it? It means my kids will have to give up some of their activities they love. What if it all ends up being a total waste of time and energy? What if it all needs, it all ends up being a total waste of time and energy? What if it's all just some sort of ego trip or head game, something I've projected onto myself? Have we all... Or any of us ever been in Shauna's shoes all the time it says I'm not ready y'all I'm scared she sniffled wiped away a few running tears I wanted to console her reach back and rub her need to say there there I understand but in that moment other words started coming out instead of instead before I really pr process what they might sound like spoken with a fierceness and intensity that shocked even me do it anyway i said spinning around almost a full turn from my front seat position looking directly into her face shauna if the only reason you aren't moving forward is fear then don't you see that the enemy is trying to paralyze you He's the one behind this. Don't sit there and let him do that. Don't let him stop you from moving forward. I don't care how afraid or not ready you may feel. Obey God anyway. She stared at me blankly. I stared back. Both of us stunned by indignation. The fact is I was mad. Still am mad at the enemy for messing with my friend like that. Or beauty. 
duty from heaven he's trying to divert me from and I'm just not having it not anymore not from him I hope you're not either the fact is fear is one of Satan's primary schemes for crippling God's people I'm not talking about legitimate concern I'm not talking about the protective warnings of wisdom and godly counsel. I'm not. I'm talking about fear. I'm talking about fear. Insistent worry up all night. Anxiety. Worst case scenarios becoming the only probabilities you think about. Fear like these. Fear like these. Instead of simply raising our blood pressure ought to set off some fire alarms Why am I feeling so paralyzed like this? We clearly know from scripture that God has not given us a spirit of fear But of power and love and a sound mind and that is found in 2 Timothy 1 7 So whenever you sense Whenever you sense a spirit of fear invading any particular area of your life, you can now you can know by process of elimination that it's not coming from God. That it's not coming from God. Which only leaves one other spiritual place it could originate from, which ought to make you wonder why it's there. Aren't you at least a little bit curious what he's trying to keep you from experiencing? I'm pretty sure you're familiar with the story of Moses and the children of Israel. Pinned up against the waters of the Red Sea while the Egyptian Pharaoh and his armies were bearing down hard from behind. Israel was fast in the process of being surrounded by people whose nation had brutalized them and their ancestors by peop ancestors for for long horrendous centuries four centuries can you imagine it says no escape no escape and the only direction that wasn't swarming with the enemy's hordes the one path God was directing his people to go lay straight ahead through the sea through the sea so these two million Hebrews had every reason to be terrified mortified really there was no swimming out of this one and yet in the face of such impossible circumstances with the odds so heavily stacked against them and with no indicator of the miracle that God had planned Moses said to the people do not fear his very first instruction to them was not to be afraid and isn't that like the first thing that we do when when we go into uncharted waters, it's the fear just starts rising up, right? And it says, notice that Moses wasn't telling them not to feel fear. The prospect of looming death will just kind of do that on its own. Fear is a natural human response to a lot of things, a Red Sea moment being one of them. So he knew they would feel fear, but he was telling them not to wallow in it, not to choose it, not make friends with it, not entertain it, engage it, because if they did, they risk not sticking around long enough to experience the stunning miracle their God was about to perform. And even more, they risk not having, not getting to the other side, to the promised land, to the milk and to the honey, to destiny. Oh, so that's just the enemy wanted fear to keep them from obtaining. That's what they'd all be singing about in the next chapter while Pharaoh's army was being swallowed whole by the waters and Israel was 
his written word and by the sounding board of wise godly counsel and your only real reason for resisting him is because you're afraid of what following him down this path might mean or cost or entail that then you're not only on the threshold of being disappointed you're about to miss an opportunity to give God some fresh new glory by doing what he's wanting to do through you which is the true impetuous which is the true impetuous behind his invitation for you to join him on the scary adventure in the first place in fervent prayer we discover something our God is fearless I'm gonna say that again in fervent prayer we discover something our God is fearless and because he is fearless we can be fearless too because he is fearless because he is fearless we can be fearless too when his presence is with us and going before us no Red Sea should phase us or give us pause so despite your hesitation say yes Walk on, have faith, fear not. That is so good. There is a call to prayer, which I'm going to read to you guys. A call to prayer. As we're ending, it says in the call to prayer, God wouldn't tell us not to be afraid or tell us or to tell us so often if he didn't fully realize that fear, worry, anxiety, anxiety, queasiness, cold feet, sweaty palms, dry mouth, and racing heartbeats are our first natural reaction to some of those challenges of following him, especially those like most that don't come with clear step-by-step -step instruction on how to handle every possible hiccup or contingency. The enemy, of course, aware of this, is always lurking nearby, eager to animate and agitate those concerns of ours so they keep us at night and interfere with our ability to think clearly. He even goes a step further stamping a spirit of fear on the very things he knows are God's best options for us but God is always there as well far outranking him in strength God is far outranking the enemy in strength to hear our troubled prayers reaffirm his fearless promises and deliver the next bit of lamp light we need for walking steadily in his direction prayer is the difference maker an invitation for honesty yes for telling him how you feel infused with the assurance and fearless confidence that comes from god's promises remember these worries of yours they are not just straight thoughts they are deliberate strategies strategies to derail you from your destiny and calling and the way to fight them is with deliberate prayer strategy of your own this book is always always ministering to me and um you know i feel like i'm kind of like shauna right like everybody never thinks that i'm afraid everybody always thinks that i'm just ready to do what god has called me to do um especially when it comes to um church or ministering or doing any of that good stuff because i'm loud i'm very outspoken and um you know somebody tells me to do something i never say no if my pastors are like i need you to do this i need you to do that um i don't ever say no i always say yes because i believe in being obedient i believe in um in um how do i say like saying yes to every opportunity that god gives you because if you don't do it somebody else will or if you don't do it god will raise somebody else and i don't ever want to feel like that 
right? I want to be obedient to God. I want to be obedient to my spiritual leaders. Um, and um, at church, you know, there are times where we have to do call to worship, open up a service, or do a tithes and offering welcome talk um, to those that are new, or to do a video, or to pray and intercede, or um, minister and, and pray for people, and even translating. When I have to translate, I am always nervous. I do praise and worship at church every time before the service starts, my stomach hurts. I'm afraid I tell my um, praise and worship um, friends and um, at church, like, I'm, I'm nervous, like, my stomach hurts and we all feel the same. I don't ever want to get on the altar and feel comfortable because that's the moment that I know that I'm not relying on God. I'm relying on my strength. Um, I can't go to church and eat anything or drink anything. Like, um, my husband always, like, goes to Dunkin' Donuts and he's like do you want something and i'm like no i, I can't i'm singing today but if i'm in kids church serving that day i'm like oh yeah give me a large iced coffee caramel cream sugar i have no problem but i am always afraid um, if i have to lead a song lord like my hands start shaking i get really nervous i doubt myself i um i cringe at the sound of my voice and it's always been like this and um it's this fear that the enemy puts inside of you to make you feel like you're not good enough. To make you feel that you're not called, that that somebody else can do it better than you. Um, even with ASMR, I've mentioned this before, like, I question and overthink every single video that is about to be posted. And I see other people that have you know in the community these views and these followers and my goal is to minister the word of god you know like i want people all around the world to encounter the god that we serve the god that i serve the god that saved me that that loves me like i want like that's my goal like to help people that are struggling and um that are struggling that um can't sleep that don't know god or you know help them transfer from secular ASMR because there's so much there's so much ASMR out there that is far from godly and far from just a regular role play right and you know my heart's desire is to help these people with with God and you know as soon as I do a video I start to overthink and I'm just like oh like I messed up or I didn't do enough triggers or you know I feel like it's always the same thing like you know and I see other people and I'm just like man like you know and it's just this fear that the enemy puts inside of you you know and I have to constantly encourage myself constantly encourage myself by reminding me like David did of God's promises and the word of God you know it's you know the enemy truly loves to make us feel like this he likes to make us feel so insignificant and um you know I, I can totally relate to strategy number six fear because it consumes you it wants to paralyze you but like I said I never say no and um I do it afraid every single time I do it afraid and you know I, I, I ask God I'm like God remove this fear but I feel like the fear God God allows the fear to be there to see if I'm gonna be obedient to see if I'm gonna push through and and, and trust in him you know I could be like the Israelites and complain and want to turn back or I can trust God completely and be like God with this fear without this fear i'm gonna do it because you've called me you've anointed me for this so um i want to encourage you that you know if you feel fear if you struggle with fear it is normal but do not allow it to paralyze you do not allow it to stop you from doing what god has called you to do we're gonna mess up we're not perfect right we're not perfect by any means but it's important it is important for us to just push through and do it afraid we are daughters and sons of the living god we have inheritance he has called us to walk in power and authority and with a sound mind so if you struggle with fear 
if you struggle with anything and if this is ministered to you I want to pray for you tonight as we end you know and I just said all of that to just show you that not because you see somebody on social media or on YouTube means that they have it all together if anything I feel like I'm just such a hot mess um, I feel like you know like I struggle in different ways than other people and sometimes I feel like my struggles are maybe insignificant like if I tell other people they're gonna be like oh my god really that's all you struggle with but to me like they're big things you know especially in the mind but I just want to remind you tonight that you're not by yourself you're not the only one that struggles you're not the only one that deals with fear I'm not perfect at all um trust me at all <laughs> um please understand that um um I just want to do what God has called me to do even when I'm afraid you know um I think about all of you guys when I do these videos like man I know that that my MVPs the ones that are always commenting my 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 little tribe from the beginning is is waiting on these videos and I think about you guys and I and I, I just want to make you guys happy and I want you guys to know that you're not by yourself I truly pray for this channel I pray for all of you guys and I know that a lot of you guys are going through so many different things so you're not by yourself so if you can pray for me as I pray for you your this sister in Christ would truly appreciate it because I need all the prayers that I can get I appreciate prayer so I'm gonna end tonight with a prayer for you guys for you all Heavenly Father thank you for the word that was uh, read today thank you for the fervent book thank you for strategy number six and for removing the blindfold on the spirit of fear Lord so many of us are struggling with fear as I speak so many of us are struggling and have been struggling for years with fear God I declare that the spirit of fear will no longer paralyze your people will no longer paralyze your people from doing what you have called them to do Lord I declare that we will walk in authority in power and in dominion that we will have a sound sound mind Lord I declare that we will not allow the tactics and the plans of the enemy to stop us to stop us from doing what you have called us to do I declare that when the spirit of fear wants to arise we will attack it we will attack it with your word that we will remind ourselves who we are that we are a daughter that we are a son of a king that we are the daughters and the sons of Yeshua that we have power that we have authority that when we look in the mirror we will speak words of affirmation that we are called that we are anointed that we are the head and not the tail Lord you have called us for such a time as this and we cannot allow fear to get in the way of doing what you've called us to do i declare that the words of the enemy the negative words will decrease and the volume of your word will increase i declare that your holy spirit is with each and every viewer i declare that you are giving them rest that you are removing that fear and that we will do it with boldness that we will do what you've called us to do with that we will grab that microphone that we will pray for our brothers and sisters that we we will do whatever it is that you've called us to do whether it be to write that book record a video minister on tiktok or instagram read your word in front of a congregation to pray for the homeless to give food to somebody that we will not be afraid and that when our sisters or our brothers in Christ need us, that we will speak words of life and encouragement, that we will not allow them to sit in that pity party anymore, but we will be a light in the midst of darkness, and we will knock some sense into them because they need that word. And God, I just thank you for everything. I thank you for every viewer, every listener, and I thank you for this channel. I thank you for the family that you've given me on this channel protect them cover them in the mighty 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 name of jesus christ amen and amen thank you guys so much for watching